Now in this video, we're going to look at adding hysteresis to our op amp and the circuit we're going to use is the op amp comparator. So I set a voltage and there you could already see a problem. So you can see the light flickering. It's uh, a bit indecisive right at this voltage. But if we go to the negative rail, we're dealing with 5 volts there. We go to the negative rail, it stays off until we get about to 2.5 volts. Then you see the LED went on and of course it stays on as you go up. It's that halfway point there. We set the voltage to 2.5 volts with the inverting input. The non-inverting input, if it goes below that, output's low. Above that, the output's high. But we already saw the uh, flickering that uh, can occur right there. So if you don't want that flickering with slight voltage variations, you can use feedback. And we're going to take this apart and build it uh, step by step look at it in more detail but uh, I just want to demonstrate the hysteresis right now the Schmidt trigger this is what's known as the Schmidt trigger when you have hysteresis so there you can see the signal it uh, bounces right when the output changes so it helps hold it in the condition that it is currently in and it's a really simple circuit so any uh, digital switch circuit you're probably better off adding a little hysteresis a little Schmidt trigger to it so now we're going to look at the uh, op amp itself. So luckily this kit gave me two of them. If I get the light right, we'll be able to read the uh, letters pretty good. There we go. That's not too bad. So LM358, the 358 is the main part, and then N. That's probably a variant. There's other letters and numbers. This is an on semiconductor. You can see a divot there and a divot there. They're kind of hard to see there. But that indicates that it is the top. But in any case, whatever op amps you use, make sure you look at the uh, data sheet. And start with ones where people explain the op amp to you so that uh, you already know its properties before you look at the data sheet. It'll make the data sheet a little easier to understand. So for this particular one, this is a dual op amp. There's one on each side. We're just using the one. And this can work with a single supply or a dual supply, which means the output can go to the negative rail. So not perfectly, but uh, pretty good. It does not go to the positive rail, though. That will bring us some problems later. And one of the solutions I'll uh, mention too. So we have the output here. I got a jumper to that board to extend the range of our load to get it out of the way actually. So this is a large breadboard. If you have a smaller one, you could run it up or run it down, whatever you want. And so the inverting input, that's where we're going to set our voltage. That's pin two, not inverting pin three. We'll get to that later. But we do have to power the op amp. So we can put it to a DC supply right here. It's just got a positive and negative. We consider, I'm using five volts right now, five volts and zero volts. So five volts there, zero volts, ground. Or you could say V negative. But also you could have ground be a halfway point. And then you could have positive and negative in relationship to ground. You can do either with this op amp. And now let's just hurry through the build. We have the load that comes from the output, which as I said before, is this jumper at the top there. And so I'm going to take a 220 ohm resistor for 5 volts. If we use higher voltage, we'll want a higher value resistor. But you can see I'm putting that to the jumper. And this pin doesn't really want to go in. Hopefully I don't bend it out of shape. There we go. So there we go. We got the uh, resistor there coming from the positive side. That's to protect the LED, the long lead, the anode there heads towards the output because we want it to light up when the output's high short lead the cathode to the negative rail in my last video we wired it the opposite way where the output was going to the positive rail i have the power on the output's high right now or it's unstable going on and off so fast the led is lit up but i think it's actually just sitting high right now so what we're going to do now is set our voltage so that is going to go to the inverting input right there. So you can see a negative symbol to represent inverting. Some people may say negative input or positive input. They may not say inverting and non-inverting, but I like that better. It's more descriptive. So I'm just going to take a couple 100 kilo ohm resistors. And I think that one spread a little bit more. So actually, yeah, I think this one might be the better one. So we're going to go to pin 2, see if the output turns off. No, it doesn't. Doesn't if we go low either. So it's going to stay on while the non-inverting input is floating. 
we grab the other resistor. We're just setting a voltage divider, so we'll get half of the power supply voltage. And uh, put this to the negative rail right there. The pins there can touch. These two can't touch, but uh, these two are connected to the same pin of the op amp, so it's all one conductive area, one node. It's not a short circuit on this side but it would be on that side. Luckily my power supply has short circuit protection, but still uh, be careful. Now, we're gonna set the signal. It's a trim pot. Again, I already did the comparator uh, video, and so this is nothing new right now, but maybe you haven't seen it, so I'll still kinda go through quickly. And there we go, so we're slightly more positive. That's why the output's high, now that we do have our, our uh, signal. Uh, wired up and there you can see now it goes low right there. So basic uh, Comparator circuit using an op amp. There's also comparator integrated circuits That uh, you could use but uh, in any case now we're going to give it feedback So the output goes high or low. It doesn't go all the way to the positive rail though But it does go all the way to the negative rail So what we're going to see we're going to take now I'm going to move this jumper out of the way a little bit more so that uh, we can see the resistor I'm going to add. We could add 10 kilo ohms, 2.2, 100K, doesn't really matter. But uh, I think 10 kilo ohm is probably the nicest. So that is what I did earlier in the video. So that's going to pin 1, the output, and then to pin 3, the non-inverting input, right where this trim pot is connecting. So even though there's a jumper there, it's one node, it's one conductive area. We got the feedback. And we already saw that uh, now there's not one distinct point where I turn the trim pot. The LED turns on there. It's actually pointing to about that corner of the uh, trim pot. Maybe we can see a little better there. And then when we go back down, it actually turns off pretty close to halfway. We could get uh, the multimeter and stuff. It's kind of, uh, kind of tricky to get the measurements. We could look at it at the oscilloscope, but there you can see physically. We have to turn the trim pot to about there. So that's probably about two thirds of the power supply voltage. And then just slightly less than half of the power supply voltage. This does not output, as I said, all the way to the positive rail, but it does to the negative rail. So right now the output is low. We know that because the LED is off. So it's actually connected directly to the negative rail. And so it's pulling the uh, voltage down more at the trim pot than when the output is high. So it's high now, but it's probably about 3.5 volts coming out of there in relationship to five. So now before we move along, I also got 2.2K, uh, which I like. As I said before, you can use pretty much any value you want, and then 100K, so quite a bit less, and then quite a bit more. So let's pluck the uh, 10K right now. First, let's do the 2.2k so 2200 ohm resistor right there and uh, remember these inputs do not let current into them they just look at the voltage other than a little bit of leakage but there you can see we had to go quite a bit now more negative than we did with the 10 kilo ohm resistor and quite a bit more positive right there we can uh, zoom in now there's not a whole lot of point staying that far back but uh, there you can see we did have to go to that corner to get the output high and uh, now we had to go about that far there and we went to about here for the output to go low with the 10 kilo ohm now we have to go to that corner so that's actually not too bad there I kind of like that corner but uh, I'd like to go to that corner too and I'm actually going to show you an improvement to this if we're using 5 volts where we will get that outcome so that's the 2200 ohm less resistance there's more hysteresis. It uh, kicks back into action a little easier. So now I also have a uh, 100 kilo ohm resistor somewhere. It's the orange. So we'll put that there. So you don't have to memorize the color code. I don't have it memorized at all, but I can kind of get a sense of values. Plus these are 100 kilo ohm resistors, 220 ohm protect protecting the LED because we're dealing with 5 volts. So now. We will not have really much hysteresis here. There you can see, very fine line there. This is a 100 kilo ohm resistor. So it does actually let current through the resistor, but it goes to the according uh, 
actually the uh, resistive element in the trim pot. If the output's high, some of that current will go through the resistor and then to the negative rail. So throwing off the uh, voltage of the trim pot a little bit. But in uh, any case, none of the current goes into the integrated circuit input other than a little leakage. But there you can see, we have a very fine point, but we avoid, it's enough where we avoid the uh, bounce from this not making a solid connection right where you stop kind of bounces back a little bit we avoided that popping up and the fluttering right there so before we move to the uh, kind of an improvement in my opinion it all depends on what you want but since this doesn't output completely high I'm gonna go back to the 10 kilo ohm trim pot or uh, fixed resistor I mean 10 kilo ohm resistor this is also a 10 kilo ohm trim pot I didn't mention that yet, but I did write it on there. I also left a note to make sure I mentioned that sometimes they're finicky, where they don't stop right where you set it, it'll bounce back a little bit. But in any case, we're back to the 10 kilo ohm resistor, and now I'm going to show you a improvement in my opinion. So now actually, right before we look at the improvement, we should look at the uh, voltage that we are dealing with. So again, We'll look at the uh, hysteresis there. This is at the output now. So the output's not going all the way to the negative rail right now, but that's because of the negative feedback. We can see that there. And so it is going all the way to negative rail with the load. The load's not going to positive there, so that may pull it up too. The load's going to negative, but we saw that it went to negative without the uh, feedback. Now, when we go positive, we're dealing with five volts, so one, two, three, four, five is up here, and we're down to about three and a half, so five there, and I think it'll go, no, it didn't even change. When we removed the hysteresis, let's unplug the load. There we go, the load pulled it down just a tiny bit, but it's still not the five volts right there. So you can see the output can hit zero volts a lot easier than five volts, which is kind of a problem if we want to have the same hysteresis on both sides because we're set halfway at the power supply so it's easier to uh, hold a low than a high we already saw that so in any case we're going to uh, put the resistor back and make sure it is the right one and uh, I actually shot this scene a little bit ago and accidentally put the 220 ohm resistor there and now I don't know where the 220 ohm resistor is. Let's get this out of the way. And uh, in the next scene, we'll have it in its right spot. All right, I found it. So I have a harder time seeing the uh, colored stripes on them when the uh, light is dimmer. I have it dimmer with the oscilloscope, even though I hope the camera adjusts otherwise. But here is our solution now. So we know it has a harder time getting a positive output there. It drops below the uh, rail voltage and so it's not as forceful going through this resistor as uh, negative is. And so what I'm going to do is give another path for a positive to come so that we have what's going through that resistor plus what's going through a diode and a lower value resistor. And hopefully they will kind of balance out. And I think I found that balance when we're using 5 volts. So higher voltage, you probably need a higher value resistor. I didn't test that out much. But uh, we'll look at that coming up. In any case, we just go to the output. And so we're a little cramped here. I'm going to move. We can close this up a little bit. And so I just thought of this today. So this is a completely new circuit fragment for me, adding to the feedback. But a uh, commenter mentioned they wanted to have me talk a little bit about the history and feedback a little bit more. And so I thought I would add some variety. And so I'm going to take the diode here, just a regular rectifier diode. Blocks about 0.7 volts too. That's something to keep in mind. One reason why you have to use lower value resistor. But uh, now the cathode is up here. You can see anode to the output, cathode over here because we want positive to work that way right there. And so the cathode is the gray stripe. And now we will just grab a uh, one kilo ohm resistor so I'm pretty sure that's it yep right there so put that to the cathode and then to the 
non-inverting input. So that will help get a little more of the output to the non-inverting input. So there you can see where the setting is to keep the output uh, high. Now of course to set it low we got to go back a bit more and uh, jumper's kind of in the way. But there you can see we pretty much hit that uh, corner right there. Now we'll work our way up and we hit pretty much that corner there. Maybe I can turn it so it's a little easier to see right there. But uh, I think you could have seen it okay there. So corner to corner. So we got about uh, the same on each side. So I have to do that because this outputs to the negative rail, but not the positive rail. Most op amps will probably uh, be spaced about the same either way. So you may be just fine without adding this back. I don't know that I've ever seen this before. Obviously, if I thought of it, probably uh, thousands or millions of people have before me. But uh, I don't remember actually seeing this. I came up with it on my own today. And so, hope you uh, enjoyed that. That's really about, actually, there is one more part of this video that uh, I didn't want to forget. Here is what you'll commonly see when it comes to the hysteresis right there. You'll see a drawing similar to this. This is uh, a little bit more of my take. But you can see when the voltage is low enough, then the output stays low. But once it hits whatever the uh, upper threshold is, then it jumps up. The output goes high or on, whatever you're going by. And then you have to go back down in voltage before you hit the other threshold. And then it will drop low. So as we saw before, there's uh, different ways. Basically, there's a resistor that sets like how wide the threshold is. And then I added another one with a diode to move one or the other of them. And so that's uh, different things depending on what you need or whatnot. But the simplest is just a resistor. And there's a range. A very high value resistor just prevents that little bit of fluttering. And uh, that's definitely all you need if that's all you're worried about. But if you want more hysteresis for whatever reason, you want something to turn on at one voltage but wait a while so it's not turning on and off too much, then you can use higher value resistors and whatnot. And so there's all kinds of adjustments you can make. But uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.